is we actually have no idea whether the British taxpayers, whether we are still paying for the, zero, for the security costs of Harry and Meghan. So to unpick all of this, let me bring in Samantha Markle, who is the sister of the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan. Of course, she is based in the US herself. Samantha, you're now back in the same country as your half-sister, Meghan. I presume you haven't heard from her yet, however. No, no, of course we haven't. And, you know, it's, it's really quite dreadful amidst a historically unprecedented, devastating uh, pandemic. You know, I mean, the, you know, just the idea of abandoning both families um, during such a horrific time without so much as a phone call is quite shocking. Uh, I mean, there are no words. There are no words. Now, you remain very close to your father, Thomas Markle, who is, of course, also Meghan's dad. He said over the weekend he's very deeply upset that he hasn't heard from Meghan since she returned to America. How's he feeling? Well, of course not. But, you know, considering he went through two heart attacks without so much as a phone call, I guess this is, you know, status quo um, for her. And, uh, you know, I think... Now, though, to abandon the British people and the British royal family at such um, a critical time, you know, is um, is just almost, you know, it it takes me back to Roman Colosseums. It seems so horribly cruel. And, um, you know, there's no other way to slice this apple. uh, It's just, and you know, and then furthermore, to suggest that taxpayers pay for their security when people don't have resources, they're dying the world is struggling for their lives is incredible grandiosity. I mean, I think this is historically unprecedented um, narcissism and grandiosity. And I would suggest that they really focus on what's the priority in life. People love the nuances in life because all of the money and everything else that they think they have is totally fleeting and elusive. The emphasis is definitely on the wrong syllable. And I think we all get that now. And unfortunately it takes tragedy to, shake us to come to our senses. Now, of course, Donald Trump tweeted last night about the move, and I can't imagine he's very happy, Samantha, with the video that was released by Russian pranksters, which showed Prince Harry thinking he was speaking to Greta Thunberg and saying that Donald Trump had blood on his hands in regards to climate change. Do you think that's what prompted him to tweet saying that the US would not pay for the security costs for Harry and Meghan? Because- well, you- I, I, I totally support him. I think he's remarkable under these circumstances. And absolutely, the United States should not pay for their security um, for several reasons. First of all, they're not royal. They're not entitled to Secret Service protection. They made that decision, so they have to live with it. And I think for him to say that Donald Trump has blood on his hands is absolutely disgusting, given the fact that this man is struggling to save the lives and, and to help restore the world, but also given the fact that Harry is a hunter. Who is he to talk about blood on anybody's hands? And I, you know, I think he and Megan right now really don't care or seem to care about families and people around them. I mean, their, their focus on self-preservation is quite disgusting. No, so, I'm... you know, I mean, you know, yeah, they can, they can, they can um, throw stones all they want, but they're the biggest hypocrites right now on the planet. Now, I broke the story on Friday, the fact that they were fleeing from Canada by private jet to relocate to the Los Angeles area. I can tell you, Samantha, that there was absolute shock and horror within the British royal family that Harry and Meghan had not at least temporarily decided to return to Frogmore Cottage, which is their mansion, their luxury taxpayer-funded refurbished mansion in the grounds of Windsor Castle because, of course, that would mean that they were close to the Queen and Prince Philip, who are self-isolating right now. They would be in the same uh, country as Prince Charles, who is also having to self-isolate after experiencing COVID-19 himself. But I guess relations between the members of the family are just so strained that couldn't happen. Um, you know, I, I think the interesting thing with family, most families, I, I'm not saying this is my sister's attitude, but most families are resilient and in times of crisis, they're always accepting of each other. There might be an allowance for that. But the problem that they have is there's been so much public dissent. The British people are struggling. People are dying everywhere. 
they're resenting, you know, um, you know, everything that has happened. So it's not just a relationship between the royals and Meghan Harry. It's also the British public. And that has just gone incredibly haywire. And so um, I, I'm sure that it's stressful. But, you know, throughout all of this, um, I think Meghan and Harry have been incredibly reckless in their handling of the British royal family and the people worldwide. Well, you know, some critics, I'm, some critics of your sister Samantha say that this was her plan all the all along. She always wanted to end up back in Hollywood to focus on her well, career yeah, and focus on I, making I money. Do you think that's yeah, true? I, I don't think that's a rumor at all. That's evidenced by the fact that she never severed relationships with her agent, lawyer, and manager in Los Angeles. The evidence is clear. There's, a, there's, there's some very interesting facts emerging just over the past couple of hours about their future relations with the royal family, including the fact that Buckingham Palace or no other royal communications representatives, including palace spokespeople, household representatives or royal sources, will speak any more on behalf of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Instead, as you point out, they now have this PR company in the US called Sunshine Sachs that has previously represented people like Michael Jackson and Harvey Weinstein. They are now representing the couple. Um, I, you know, I, I think um, desperate times call for desperate measures. I, I think that speaks loudly about their position and their need to candy coat everything that's happened. You know, I, I think they would need a company like mm. that. And um, Well, look, we are in crisis, though, mm. right now. We are in crisis, Samantha. Here's an idea for you. You say that COVID-19 makes us all need to change our priorities. Could you not be the person that somehow arranges Harry and Meghan and your dad to get back in contact. He's in Mexico, just over the border. You're in Florida, so you're all in the US. Is there no way that you guys can just say, you know what, the last two years was a nightmare, it's a disaster. We're now out of the royal family. We're living in the US. Let's mend the Markle family relations. Is there any chance, Samantha? Well, I think, uh, you know, that that is um, idealistic. I mean, on the grounds that several of us, of us over the last couple of years watched, you know, a pattern of being disregarded and being ghosted, even though we extended olive branches. And like the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Mm. They have the resources. They have the power. They have, you know, I mean, they have all the PR. They have, you know, they have everything. The burden is on them now to make the effort and prove that they are diplomats and humanitarians. They can't skate around ignoring everybody and say, on the other hand, uh, we're humanitarians, we care about everybody, let's all get together well, talk the talk, you know, be the change, practice what you preach or change your speech. It must be so devastating for you, though, to not have met your nephew, Archie, and your dad, Thomas, hasn't met his grandson. Well, you know, that that's sad not only for family, but I, I think it's sad for Archie as well. I mean, he's young now, but throughout his life, he's going to see all of this in history. And tragically, um, you know, that it was so personal during a, a worldwide pandemic. I mean, this is all just God. You know, if people can't get together during a pandemic, then what have we become as a world and as people. Well, Samantha, you know, you, you know, you know, you got a lot of criticism when Meghan first entered the royal family, and so did your father, Thomas. And actually, now, what most commentators concede is that much of what you and Thomas said about Meghan's history, her propensity to ghost people, her propensity to cut people off in order to get what she wants, most commentators say that she's proven it to be true. So is there a little bit of you, even though this is a very sad situation, is there a little bit of you that feels vindicated in a way now? Well, yes. And sadly, though, there's also a little bit of me that, that still, when I see her, I always see the face of my little sister. And, you know, it's like Jim Carrey and, in, uh, you know, Dumb and Dumber. It's like one in a million. So you're saying there's a chance. It's like there's this little part of me it still thinks, wow, there's a pandemic. Maybe this will be the chance. Maybe she'll feel something. Maybe she'll come around and realize how short and precious life and family and people 
are and not objectify them. So if she reached out to you, if she was listening to this and she reached out to you, you would take the phone call or you would answer the email? Yeah, but I would say, you know what? Call me later. Call Dan first. (laughs) Well, we know that's not going to be happening. Samantha, Michael, are you okay, by the way? You're in self-isolation. Yes, I'm okay. And, you know, we, we've got gloves, respirators. We don't go out. We're ordering things now on the phone. And God, you know, I've seen... Because you have just, underlying health c- concerns, of course, as does your father. Um, you know, a, a lot of people do. And I think, I think clearly, though, that, you know, the key is staying away from everybody right now until the world gets a grip on this. And, and just, you know, precautions, because there's still so much that the World Health Organization and doctors don't know about this. It's constantly mutating. You know, it's somewhat airborne for a couple of hours. So please stay home, stay safe. And God, my blessings and prayers to Great Britain and the world. This is, um, you know, this is horrible. So let's find a way to get through it. Thank you so much. And please pass your regards on to your father, Thomas from me as well. That is Samantha Markle, the sister of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Very controversial comments, of course, that come on the final day that Meghan and Harry are officially members of the royal family. They have announced today that they will go silent for a little while as the world deals with this pandemic and they'll stop posting on their Royal Sussex Instagram page and website as well.